just want to do a quick little follow-up video here on the previous sermon that I had put up on the uh, burial versus cremation. Um, a brother over in the UK, a friend of mine I've known for a while, uh, actually sent me some information that I thought was very interesting on the origin of the modern cremation movement in the UK and probably here in America as well. I'm sure it probably went from the UK to America. Um, there's a man named William Price who actually was the first one to perform a cremation in England and uh, way back in the um, in 1884 was the first cremation that was done and uh, very interesting information about this uh, William Price, Dr. William Price. I'm going to read a Wikipedia article and I realize you know Wikipedia has its issues of course but you know I didn't really feel like spending a whole lot of time really researching the life of this weirdo William Price and I'm sure if somebody really wants to they can go out there and find out all the information whatever else on him but the point is this guy was nuts all right and you can see you know I did check some of the other websites and things this information is uh, you know accurate about the guy but let me just I'm not going to read the whole thing I'm going to put the link to this article down in the description box but it says here, quote, After cremating his dead son in 1884, Price was arrested and put on trial by those who believed cremation was illegal in Britain. However, he successfully argued that there was no legislation that specifically outlawed it, which paved the way for the Cremation Act of 1902. Upon his death, he was cremated in a ceremony watched by 20,000 onlookers. Very interesting that he would use that article, that there is no law that specific, no legislation, excuse me, that specifically outlawed it. Because that's what many people have done with the sermon that I put up. They say, well, there's no actual scripture in here specifically saying cremation is wrong. So therefore, we can do it. Um, that's not the way a Bible believer handles this subject. Okay? I mean, you go through the whole Bible and it's people being buried and buried and buried and buried and buried. And only one guy gets burned and that's because he's cursed. Um, you know... Usually you can add that up and say, you know what, I think burial is God's method and not cremation. And a lot of you, oh, you know, you don't understand how expensive it is. You, you didn't, you're, all you're doing is proving that you didn't watch the whole sermon. Because I talked about a cheaper way to do burial. You don't have to go with the big expensive funeral homes that rack up thousands of dollars of debt. Continuing here with the article, it says, Known for adhering to such principle, principles as equal democratic rights for all men, oh boy, vegetarianism, cremation, and the abolition of marriage, all of which are, were highly controversial at the time. He, he has been widely labeled as an eccentric and a radical. Um, no, actually, he's a devil-possessed lunatic. And I'm not just being a you know mean and trying to use... A nasty thing. The guy was devil possessed and had certain things with the moon there. All right. I'll show you some pictures here as we continue. Um, biography. This is interesting. His father, also named William Price, Price was an ordained priest of the Church of England who had studied at Jesus College in Oxford. Reverend Price suffered from an undiagnosed mental illness. I'm going to be doing a study on that in the future, this thing of undiagnosed mental illnesses. All these mental illnesses that are coming out now, and they say, we don't really know where it came from. It's people that are possessed with devils, and the modern psychiatry industry, you know, it's not a medical field, it's an industry, it's business. That modern profession there, they don't know how to handle these people, so they just say it's an undiagnosed mental illness. You know, you have Cotard syndrome, people that like to be around graves all the time, and you have all these other mental illnesses, and you read in the Bible, they're people that are possessed with devils. But see, as people become more and more heathen, and as more and more civilized nations kick the Bible out, you're going to see more and more possessed, possession of you know, people being possessed with devils. And the psychiatry feels, oh, it's mental illness. Yeah, this guy was possessed with devils. Continue reading here. It says he was acting erratically and experiencing fits of violent rage. 
like the man possessed, you know, legion in the Bible there in the in the Gospels, and it talked about how no man could bind him and he'd break the chains and stuff like that. Violent rage. He bathed either fully clothed or naked in local ponds and collected snakes in his pockets for days at a time. Carrying a saw around, he removed bark from trees, then burning it while muttering certain words, also spitting onto stones, believing that it improved their value. His actions led him to becoming a threat to the local community, in one instance firing a gun at a woman whom he claimed was t taking sticks from his hedgerow, and in another hurling a sharp imp implement at another man. Fine preacher, you know, here. This is the father of William Price, Dr. William Price that started the cremation movement. Kind of a rough foundation for you if you're an advocate of the cremation thing. Hmm. Here's a picture of him. Photograph was taken of Price uh, in uh, 1884 and displaying his druidical attire. He was a druid, a witch, this Dr. William Price. But it says here, quote, uh, declaring that marriage was wrong as it enslaved women, he began having a relationship with a woman named Anne Morgan, whom he moved in with, and in 1842 she bore him a daughter. So, again, this guy, you know, it's funny because the Bible says in latter times, you know, that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Old Price here qualifies for both. And he's the one that brought in cremation. Now, Brother Brian, you shouldn't cut on cremation because it's a good, fine Christian thing to do. <laughs> you people, I'll tell you what. I didn't care what the Bible says. I just feel it's right. If this isn't your standard, then this is the kind of stuff you're going to fall for over here. Get mad at me. Go ahead. Get mad at me. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You're not accountable to me. You're accountable to God. I didn't write the book, you know. I think some of you think I did sometimes, but, you know, because you're always blaming me for just preaching it as it, it's written. But the fact of the matter is God wrote the book, and you're going to answer to God for how your life lines up here, not here. Hey, if you can show me cremation in the Bible and show me that it's justified in the Bible and God says you can burn your dead relatives, show me the verses, I'll change. It's continuing here. And it talks about in 1866, quote, he took a young farmer's daughter, Gwen Lillian Lillian, can't pronounce it there, who at the time was only 21 years old to be his new partner despite the fact that he was an old man by this time. He was a pervert. Later life and advocacy of cremation. Here's where it's interesting. Gwillian and Price's first child was born in 1883, a son whom Price named Iso Greest, the Welsh for Jesus Christ. In an act of prov provocation against the traditional religion of the time and also because he expected great things from his child. However, the infant died only five months later in January of 1884 believing that it was wrong to bury a corpse, thereby polluting the earth. Price decided to cremate his son's body, an act which at the time was taboo. Yeah, because most people were Bible-believing Christians back then. Quote, back, getting back to it here, quote, Although across the country there were already several proponents of it as a form of corpse disposal, he performed the funeral in the early evening of Sunday the 13th, of January 1884 upon the summit of a hill to one side of Lantresant. Um, a number of local people noticed the fire and upon discovering that Price was attempting to burn his infant son, surged on him. He was rescued from an angry mob by the police who arrested him for what they believed was the illegal disposal of a corpse and the body of his son, which had not yet been engulfed by the flames, was removed from the pyre. Pyre, if you don't know, is just a name for the pile of wood or coal or whatever you're using and you put the people on top. But uh, going down through here it says, quote, Price was therefore not charged with infanticide. They, they did a autopsy on the corpse of his boy and they said, oh no, he died of natural causes. So that's why it says here, Price was therefore not charged with infanticide, 
but was instead tried in a Cardiff courtroom for performing cremation rather than burial, which the police believed to be illegal. Well, it is in God's sight. Price argued that while the law did not state that cremation was legal, it also did not state that it was illegal. Like I said, a lot of you use the same argument against cremation and versus burial, you know, according to the Bible. The Bible doesn't openly condemn cre cremation, so it must be okay. That's not the way it works. Um, I mean, the, the Bible doesn't openly condemn snorting crack cocaine or, uh, you know, uh, injecting heroin into your veins. I mean, the Bible doesn't openly condemn that, so I guess it must be fine. Uh, the judge, Mr. Justice Stephen, agreed. Price was freed and returned to Landrasant to find a crowd of supporters cheering for his victory. On 14th of March, he was finally able to give his son a cremation involving his own personal druidic prayers. The case set a precedent which, together with the activities of the newly founded Cremation Society of Great Britain, led to the Cremation Act of 1902. In 1885, the first official cremation took place at Woking, and ten cremations are recorded as being performed in the following year. In 1892, a crematorium opened in Manchester, followed by one in Glasgow, in 1895, Liverpool in 1896, and Birmingham Crematorium in 1903. It's an interesting date, 1884. Hmm, 1884. Let's see, uh, what was it that happened there back around that same time? Oh, the revised version of 1881. It's an original copy, too, by the way, if you haven't seen the other videos. This is the real deal right there. Westcott and Hort, the first new version from the Vatican's versions, the Vatican manuscripts, excuse me, the Alexandrian text, coming out supposedly as a revision of the King James, you know. And they came out with, what, over 200 of these things since then. Interesting that it, this thing came out in 1881, the New Testament. The whole thing came out in 1884, the same year that this nut was trying to burn his son. And around that same time, cremation became legal. That's just a coincidence. And every time these new versions come out, bad things happen. You say, give me another example. Okay, 1974, Roe versus Wade. You say, what's that have to do with anything? That's when the NIV came out. 73, 74. Hmm. Righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Every time a new version is released, more and more evil happens. Why? Because they're satanic. Highly satanic. As is the practice of cremation. But let's continue here. And by the way, don't go out of here saying, Oh, Brian Nellinger teaches that people that perform cremation went to hell. I don't teach that. That's ridiculous. Okay? You can do all sorts of sins and still go to heaven. In late 1884, his wife gave birth to their second child, whom Price also named Iso Greest, uh, if I'm saying that correct. He believed that his son had an important future ahead of him, being the prophesied second coming of Jesus Christ, his namesake, and predicted that he would come to reign over the earth. The guy didn't have much of a pride issue, did he? Old Dr. William Price there, naming two of his sons, you know, Jesus Christ, Iso Greest there in, in the Welsh language. But... You know, his son is the prophesied second coming of Jesus Christ. Then who would that make old uh, William Price there? Because maybe in his warped little devil-possessed mind that he th actually thought he was God or something, I guess. Guy was nuts. And then uh, personal beliefs of William Price. This is interesting. He was a nudist. Late 1800s. Price refused to wear socks. He said they were unhygienic. He was also an advocate of vegetarianism, believing that eating meat brought out the beast in man, and denounced vivisection. Price opposed marriage, which he saw as the enslavement of women, instead advocating free love. Oh, yeah, I thought it was the hippie movement in the 1960s. No, it was this whole thing, these new versions, the Westcott and Hort philosophy, German rationalism influencing the intelligentsia in, in the UK and they brought out this garbage and everything else fell apart after that. Just 
Absolutely incredible. Going on here is personal beliefs. It says, quote, Price believed that religion was often used to enslave people and despised sanctimonious preachers. Well, if he would have listened to the uh, sanctimonious preachers, he wouldn't have gone to hell and burned where he's at right now. Kind of funny because uh, he was cremated when he died. You know, 20,000 people watched it and everything, you know, when he was cremated. And uh, he died, and they burned his corpse, and his soul is burning still today. You know, if I could interview Dr. William Price, I'd say, hey, what do you think about cremation? Ah! <laughs> Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. You say, why are you laughing about that? He died without Jesus Christ. He knew. He knew about Jesus Christ. Oh, what blasphemy. Name your two different sons Jesus Christ. He wasn't ignorant. So I'll laugh at somebody like that. You say it was a tragedy that he died and went to hell. Sure. Anybody that dies and goes to hell is a tragedy. But the fact is, when you have a guy like that that's had chance after chance after chance, and he's blaspheming, openly blaspheming God, I have no sympathy for somebody like that at all. Salvation is such a simple thing. Understanding the Bible after you get saved is such a simple thing. Submission to it is not always easy. You say, well, Brian, this, this burial thing is going to be a little bit tougher than cremation. Oh, sure. Doing right is always more difficult than doing wrong. If you haven't learned that by now, uh, you probably ought to try and get a lesson on that or, or two. And you know, I'm being a little bit sarcastic right now because, you know, I, I, there's so precious little time in this life. And for people to be just wasting their time, just, oh, I don't care what the Bible says and everything. You're never going to go anywhere in life if you don't care what the book says. This is your standard. Is cremation right? No, no. And in fact, the modern practice of cremation has its roots in the occult. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm sure I could dig even deeper and find even more occult things and whatever else. It's always been pagan people that cremated their dead loved ones. Always. You're never going to find justification for it in the pages of the King James Bible. This isn't going to happen. So submit to the book or submit to your own feelings and preferences. The choice is yours.